moment is here, you can stop your search, it's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, I've tried to hit on this topic uh, a few times and, and I don't do it well. And then somebody comes along with this, uh, this mail uh, and, and asks this question that I think sums it up maybe better than, than I can. Um, this one's a, a, a tough one to read because there's elements of this I've certainly experienced. And I think I, I would suspect many of the rest of you have too. It's just that uh, we've been distracted by, you know, more current topical kind of events and maybe we've forgotten what some of this feels like, but let me read this mail to you. And it's a long mail, but, um, you know, as I'm reading it kind of think, does this, does this ring true for me? It goes, Hey Perch, I like your channel and I listen to it while running to keep me entertained. That's a horrible mistake, but okay. I have a perspective I feel isn't, I, that I feel isn't covered in your videos or more accurately in the comments people make. I love comics and I've been collecting them for over 20 years. I go to my local comic shop weekly and conventions whenever we can, whenever I can. By and large though, my interactions with comic creators has been extremely negative, rude, dismissive, and insulting being the common experience. I have never talked about diversity, politics, or any of the topics that are hot button issues. I personally voted for Biden and it's in my profile. I hate Trump and I do think comics should have more non-white characters. However, I also think comics should feature more religion, but my parents taught me to avoid religion and politics in conversations and that has always been good advice. So I don't have the experience of being chewed out for being a Trump voter or arguing about who or should or shouldn't be black in a comic. But most interactions with creators are still so negative that I find I am starting to buy less. My monthly spending on comics has gone down. Experiences that stuck in my mind include, I once met Jerry Conway at a convention and he was rude to everyone at his table, insulted us for only caring about new characters and said, I don't even know what I'm he I don't even know why I'm here several times. I met Peter David, but he wouldn't even look up from his book and carelessly scribbled his name on a copy of X Factor I was having him sign. He clearly could not have cared less about me or anyone around. Online, Dan Slott called me entitled after I asked him what he would think of a superior Spider-Man sequel, and then he blocked me and continued to make fun of me behind the block. I didn't demand anything, and I asked if he would do it or how he would feel if anyone else would do it. I'm assuming writing the book. I asked friends if I sounded rude, but nobody thought so. Kelly Thompson attacked me after I suggested she combine Ghostbusters new and old teams together in a comic book. Her followers piled on and Thompson encouraged it. Andy Curry made a point to call me a fake fan in public, then blocked me. Soon after this, I noticed several others did too. Now, I am not following any CG people, and I've been very careful not to get lumped in with that crowd that, frankly, I find pretty annoying. I don't follow you either, for that matter. I follow very few people, and I do not think I'm getting caught up in any kind of chain via my relationships. Via, via my relationships. However, when I did check out a live stream and asked about All-Star Superman, one of the CG artists on the panel made a point to start mocking my question as a DC simp. This behavior happens all the time from that group through jokes and talking down to people, even though they say they're fan supportive and it's all just harmless jokes. I could go on and on. I always see people talking about being attacked for political reasons, but my experience with comic pros has been a lot of condescending, sneering behavior. They just treat me and others bad. What do you think? All right, that's a lot. Um, you know, I, well, I guess I'll just say it from my perspective. Um, it's pretty common, these negative stories of things that happen at conventions. I, I think that's, this is not new. Um, it's, it, it definitely occurs. I've heard the uh, fake fan. I've heard of artists and, and writers chewing people out for not liking kind of the, either the new characters or the old characters. I've heard uh, plenty of interactions. And, and in fact, to the point where, um, there is, you know, I, I've started to remember very vividly, 
uh, people who are who are nice. Uh, I you know I've met Chris Claremont many times at a convention, and it's always been really really good uh, every time. And Liam Sharp is another one. I've met him at conventions many times, and he's warm and gracious and funny. And I mean, he doesn't sit there and uh, you know talk to you for an hour because that, then that's nice for you, but it's probably rude for the person behind you. But you know, gracious, and and you feel like you're you're getting an actual interaction with somebody who's happy to be there. Now, conventions are hard, in, in, and this is not me come running to the defense of anyone, but uh, arguably, if you're going to sit in this room with, with kind of this weird, you know, uh, white noise kind of sound around you, and it's usually hot and stuffy, and you got a lot of people coming at you constantly, and it, it can be overwhelming. You want some water, you just, it, it doesn't feel good. And this is, uh, this is common in, in comics. Uh, it, it is common to, for the convention experience to be frustrating. I, I, and that definitely, that can make you cranky and I'm, I'm sympathetic to, you know, creators who are sitting there for three days straight and they just get beat, um, it, uh, even more so. And I've seen this happen plenty too, where they go out for, for food or go out for a drink or something after the show. And then they're kind of bombarded with people, uh, who aren't respecting their kind of their personal space. Uh, I, I, you know, that, that would get, that would get tiring, no doubt about it. Uh, but you know, it, it, some of this behavior, yeah, it's, it's unreasonable. And it's, it's kind of prima donna behavior is probably the best way to put it. It's, it's, you know, definitely have encountered that, seen it. It's always a little gross. Um, I think online, uh, you make a really good point here in that we're all so, uh, the, the conversation has so tipped over into politics um, or the diversity topic. And usually those are intermingled that it's kind of distracting everyone from just, you know, people being decent to each other. And I see, I've seen plenty of creators uh, prior to Trump act like entitled a-holes. I mean, and I, I've mentioned this, I don't know how many of you, and I'm, I'm curious in the comments below, let me know if you had this experience. But if you went to the Warren Ellis forums, um, it was it was a pain in the ass. The people acted like dicks. And, and unfortunately, that is kind of my... That's what's burned in my head of a lot of these people of, uh, you know, of, of certainly Warren Ellis and, and Matt Fraction and Heidi McDonald and a lot of the people who are hanging out there. Uh, they acted like entitled a-holes. It was their stage. And you were lucky if, you know, you were allowed to kind of glimpse it and people would talk down to you constantly. One of the things that's, that's I, I have a natural instant dislike for. And a lot of people do it is they'll say uh, something like, well, I've been in the industry, so I know a lot more than you. Why would you say that out loud? Maybe it's true. It's not always true, though, I found. Um, I mean, <laughs> it's funny. People will tell me that and then not know the sales of their own comic. But I, why, why would you say that out loud? Think about how you sound. You sound like a douchebag when you say stuff like that. Like, uh, well, I, you know, I, I've been in the industry, so I know a lot. Like, People know you've been in the industry. You don't need to. You don't need to cite your resume at somebody. You sound like a douche. Uh, that's that. That I don't know why people are obsessed with doing that, but they are. And a lot of this was going on prior to a lot of these political kind of debates we have now. But unfortunately, it's almost like. I mean, the way I see it is, it's almost like we've given people an out or an excuse to say, well. You know, uh, this this argument is about Trump voters or Biden voters or all that. And that's why people are getting angry. It's because they're hung up on their politics where, yeah, actually forget the politics. The people are are sometimes just dicks. Not all of them. You know, the people I've, I've, I've by and large interviewed have been really, really pleasant. I like talking to Jim Zub. I feel like uh, I could go and Jim Zub's a, a cook and I could talk to him for five hours. He's a just he's an engaging guy. Uh, I know that I would go out and hang out with Jeff Thorne and we would have a good time. I 100% know it. Um, but what the common denominator is these people are, are fairly humble. They're, they're, you know, they're self-aware and they're humble. And it works. Um, I, I think that, that there's certainly a lot of people who aren't. Now, I've had similar experiences, by the way, with some of the names you mentioned. Absolutely. Um, I, I, you know, and, and then there's some others I've had good experiences with. I, I, I you know, you can catch people on a bad day. Sure. I, by the way, I'm not doing gymnastics to try and excuse bad behavior. Bad behavior is bad behavior. And, and yeah, everybody can have a bad day, but if you do snap at somebody, if you do act like an asshole, then whether you had a bad day or not, you're obligated to make up for it. Uh, that's how I was raised anyway. 
Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I think people, if comics wants to survive, it, the thing is you can't have everything and comics is not a huge enough business. It's not a Hollywood business where you can act like a prick to people and it's, you're still going to make tons of money and be loved and adored because, you know, there's just so much money and so much attention toward it. People who act like jerks tend to wash out. They begin to be the sad old men at the table. Um, very, very quickly or old women, depending on what it happens to be. Um, I've seen people new to their careers at cons acting like, you know, arrogant jerks and you look at it and you're like, this career is going to end shorter and badly because they're, they're sending out a vibe there that they are just too good for everyone else. And, and people don't put up with that for long. And I do, uh, I do think the, there is this excuse of like, I'm just teasing kind of stuff that, yeah, it, that doesn't work as an excuse. Like, I'm just having fun. I'm, I'm acting like a complete and absolute prick to everyone around me, but it's just, I, it's just a joke. It's harmless. <laughs> Can't you take a joke? I'm just kidding. There's no malice behind it. I'm just, you know, I'm just attacking you relentlessly, but you know, it's, it's just, just for humor. It, it's not though. Nobody, nobody believes that. Everyone sees through it. And you come across like a dick. Um, I think that, you know, I, and I've gone into like, I, I think there's parts of comics where, you know, you're generally isolated and then suddenly you show up at a con and everyone's around you and everyone's there for you. And it can do weird things to your head. It, it, you know, you're not, you're an introvert by nature and you're not used to this. And so suddenly you start acting very, very strange. And then I think, uh, you know, online social media has further amplified that where you're rewarded for hot takes, you're rewarded for kind of chewing somebody else out on a stage. And you've got a lot of people out there who are sycophants who are going to, you know, clap and love everything you do, especially if you're taking somebody else down because in their minds and a lot of, uh, uh creators, I've, I've talked to creators about this and they miss it. When those, uh, sycophants are cheering you on for attacking someone else, you realize that part of the reason they're doing that is because in their minds, they're getting one step closer to you over the body of somebody you're attacking. They view it as sport. Uh, that's not healthy for you as a creator. Uh, but it's an interesting point. I, I, um, I don't know. I see this and this is kind of, as I said, I've tried to talk about this. It, this gets to the heart of where I think there are problems and what, and where I get sad because I, I think this is a legitimately, um, bad thing that occurs. And I think it is there. It's more common in the industry than it should be. Is it everyone? No. Um, but it's, it's a decent amount. Um, and I think there, there is a, I don't know, there's this, this weird relationship between the customers, the fans, the creators, where the customers of hands are putting money in, we've taught them that they can have a relationship with the creators through social media, but it's not a relationship. It's a very phony kind of environment. Same thing at a con. And I think it, it puts people on a pedestal. Again, if you were familiar with the Warren Ellis forums, that place was a perfect example of, you know, a faux celebrity going to people's heads. The people who are involved there had any kind of name were absolute miserable a-holes. Uh, they treated people poorly. They acted like dicks. They, they turned it into their private little frat house and they, they demanded and expected that they be treated better than anyone else. And you either sucked up to them or, you know, you were blocked and, um, or just kept around to make fun of, uh, it's, it's lousy. What's funny about all this, uh, not, not funny, but what's tr tragic maybe about all this is a behavior that I've talked about all this. It's supervillain behavior. This exact opposite of what comics are all about, you know, um, mocking somebody at, at, you know, at their own expense and then saying, yeah, it's nothing personal. I'm just teasing you. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that, that's a kind of crap that Flash Thompson would do to Peter Parker that was, you know, highlighted as being bullying crap behavior, um, calling people out a lot of the stuff that goes on here. It's, it's the exact opposite of the characters that, you know, people are writing and drawing. And I, I find that tragic and shocking. You would have expected some of this would have worn off on people in a good way by now. Anyway, thanks for the message, uh, kind of a downer message, but, uh, but a good one. Uh, but, uh, what do you think?
Let us know in the comments below your feelings on all this. And thanks for listening. Thank <laughs> you.